CG Matter just posted a video about making Minecraft in Blender, but instead of using UPBGE, he's using Blender's geometry nodes to achieve the effect. So why not try making it in UPBGE as well? This will likely have to be a multiple episode series, and I'll leave it up to you guys if we continue from here. Today we'll focus on the main part of Minecraft, placing and breaking blocks. I have a simple FPS controller made for this tutorial. Oh yeah, if you're interested in supporting my channel, I have a Patreon. As a member, you'll have access to all my finished tutorial blends and some of my personal projects as well. To start, we'll give our main block a property. To keep it simple, just call it block. Then duplicate the cube and place them around the player. This will give us a good platform to walk on. Select one of the cubes and duplicate it again, then place it a little ways away from the player. This will be the cube that we place later. Since we duplicated it from our platform, it'll already have the property block. Now let's give this cube a new home by putting in a new collection and calling it blocks. To make this cube stand out, I'll give it a nice green color. In the project outliner, uncheck the eye icon to hide the collection and the cube. Now we can jump into the logic. Select the player and click the new button. Then with the player selected in the dashboard window, click apply to select it. Then call the new logic tree block place. Let's start by adding logic nodes we'll need. An on update node, mouse ray node, align access to vector node, get world position node, an add object node, two vector math nodes, and finally a set world position node. For our trigger, we'll add a button node and an add node to connect it. Connect the button to the first socket of the and, then the has result to the second socket. The on update will connect to the condition of the mouse ray. Then connect the and to the condition of the add object node. Connect the done of the add object to the condition of the align access to vector node. Then connect that to the set position node. Now that all the main nodes are connected, we will be connecting the relevant data sockets. Going back to the mouse ray node, we want the cube we spawn to copy the data from the cubes we're looking at. Connect the picked object to the copy data socket of the add object node. Then using the eyedropper tool, select the cube that's in the blocks collection. Now we're going to align the cube we spawn to the original cube we look at. Connect the pick normal to the vector socket on the align axis node. Then change the axis. This will just tell the spawn cube which direction to face up. Now connect the added object to the object socket. Then we need to set the position of the cube. This is how we offset the spawn cube, that way it doesn't spawn inside the original cube. Connect the added object to the object socket of the set position node. Then we need to get the position of the object we're looking at. Connect this picked object to the get position node. Then connect the world position of the get position node to the top socket of the vector math node. We are going to add the vector of the pick normal to the position of the picked object. Then add the result to the pick normal again. Connect the result from the second math node to the value of the set position node. Make sure to select your main camera as the mouse ray and set the property to block. When we play the game, we can place blocks anywhere we want, but it's kind of difficult to tell which block we're looking at. So let's add a quick face selector. To do this, add a new plane. I gave mine a border texture similar to the one in Minecraft. In edit mode, raise the plane just above the origin point. That way it hovers just above the selected cube. Now let's go back to the logic nodes. Copy the set position node and the align access node. Then connect the done socket to the set positions condition socket. Connect the result of the first vector math node to the value of the set position node. With the eyedropper tool, select the plane. Then connect the pick normal to the vector socket of the align access node. Now use the eyedropper tool to select the plane again for the align access node. And set the axis to positive z axis. Finally, connect the has result to the condition of the set position node. When you play the game, you'll see your face selector in action. To finish off this tutorial, let's make a simple way to break blocks. Just duplicate the button and the and node. Then set the button to right click. Connect the has result to the and. Add a remove object node and connect it. The object we want to remove is the picked object. Now you can place and remove blocks like a pro. Thanks for watching. If you like my tutorials, try checking out this one, and I'll see you in the next video.